So, we're, we're going to have some fun this morning, folks. Uh, I know that we're going to have our potluck later, so we will share our food later on, but before that, we will have something like foretaste of what's going to happen. So, do people like popcorns? Popcorns? Yes, okay, we're going to have to eat some popcorn this morning. Okay, David, yeah, John, come on up and just, yeah. <laughs> Popcorns, yes. Fire, I think they like some too, right? There, there are two people way up in the north, it's way up there. Don't she? Yeah, they, they want some too. So make sure that we do, everybody has sort of popcorn and so you, you are allowed to eat. It's good. It's okay to eat, and yeah, that's good. Yeah. So as as the uh, as the uh, oh, choir doesn't have any, and yeah, we'll oh, just wait on the they get the last serving. The kids did the kids have popcorns? They got it. Oh, they got it. Make sure we have some left over for them. Or there are another round a bit later. All right. I'm good. I, I have to see. <laughs> Tastes good? No. No? Yes. So anyone has account on social media sites like Facebook, okay, or uh, uh, what about uh, Tumblr, or Instagram, Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, Skype, or Snapchat, uh, or Kakao, I see that too, that's Korean. So do you put your pictures in there, your profile pictures? Do you see a lot of people putting their profile pictures? Like, if you do, you know that over 70% of the pictures that are uploaded to the pages are self-portrait. Self-portrait pictures of self-images in various poses, facial expressions, moods and emotions in various locations, life events and circumstances called selfies. Mm -hmm. Selfies. Now, in 2013, the new word that officially made its way into the Oxford English Dictionary a selfie, the definition of selfie is a photograph that one has taken of oneself, typically one taken with a smartphone or webcam and uploaded to a social media website, the contemporary social media version of self-portrait. But not all selfies are created equal. You see, most self-portrait are taken by professional photographers, while selfies are taken by self. And while proper self-portraits are probably taken once every year or two, selfies are taken almost every day. While self-portraits are displayed on the mantle of your fireplace or on a wall, selfies are uploaded and displayed on the walls of your social media sites, where the whole world can see your pretty face. <laughs> In other words, you can update how you can update how you look and how you want the whole world to think this is how pretty you look every other day by taking and uploading selfies every day. The last time I looked at my social media sites, many people, especially the young people, not that I have many people following me on my social media sites, or not that I'm following any of them, but I looked at some of them, they all look just great in their selfies. Like, 
pretty and sexy and handsome and attractive, young and dashing, all have that X factor look. But I wonder how they really look on real life. Probably not as pretty and handsome, right? And then it probably took them many pictures to get the look, heavy makeups and heavy photo editing, just, just right angle as well. And of course, I understand the desire to show your best images to the world. Most people who look at your selfies in social media sites probably don't see you face to face in real life anyway, so no harm done, right? So you, 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 you take your selfie, you put your best look in your self, uh, social media sites and there for the whole world to think you are as good and sexy looking as your selfies. And why not, right? Why not? I'm sure there are certain therapeutic benefits of taking selfies and carrying them around with you all day long. And when you wake up in the morning and look at yourself in the mirror, what do you usually see? What's your instant reaction? Like, oh, who's that? Right? Not so pretty, right? Now, if you carry that morning self-image in your head all day long, you probably would not feel so great about yourself. So, what do you do? You said you take out your smartphone and look at your selfies. The best image of yourself and that and that probably will give you some comfort and assurance that you are not as bad looking as that morning look uh, in the mirror. There's a benefit of taking and carrying your selfies, right? I mean, we all have off days, don't we, right? Sometimes we have a bad hair day. Anybody with a bad hair day this morning? <laughs> Sometimes we suffer from bad cold symptoms. Right? Not so pretty and presentable to the world. So what do you do? You show people your selfies and you just say, this is what I usually look, not what you see right now. <laughs> there are benefits to taking and carrying your selfies. When nobody loves you and you need a little bit of loving, all you need to do is look at your own selfies and get comfy and cozy. Get that instant fix. Who loves you, babe? I look at my selfies once in a while when I'm down and grumpy and get that instant boost I need. <laughs> so I'm not so much against, so I'm not so much against taking selfies. Generally speaking, I'm not so critical of selfies out there. You want to look great and want others to think you look great, right? I have taken my selfies many times uh, in, in the past and even now as well. They look great. And I look at that when I feel down, I look at myself in selfies, I get in some boost, right? So that's okay. I can show you my selfies later. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm okay with uh, generally speaking about people taking selfies on social media sites. I, I'm not that critical. But I have issues with certain selfies, like certain self portraits in social media sites that go way beyond looking good. A selfies that are tasteless, shameful, and downright ridiculous. And I go, what were they thinking? Like, did you see some of the selfies out there in the social media site? Like, some people are taking like selfies in funeral services. Like, I've seen some of that. I mean, that's tasteless. That's like downright wrong. Okay, don't do that. Right? I've seen some people taking their selfies you know, while they're crying. Why would you do that? Right? You know. Who really wants to see your crying faces, right? Why would you want to show them to others, right? Let's see. And then, I think I've seen some of the selfies people drowning, right? You know, why would you want to do that, right? While you are drowning, don't take pictures, save yourself, right? <laughs> don't take pictures, save the ones who are drowning, right? And there are a whole bunch of others in the selfies out there, just downright ridiculous. But ultimately, selfies are all about you, all about me, right? Everything and everyone evolves around me. It's all about self-love, self-interest, self-image, self-importance, and self-wish. Ultimately, selfies will not save us, will not increase your self-worth, and will not even tell you who you truly are. The only, the only way for us to discover who we truly are is not by dwelling on our self-image, but discovering the image of God dwelling within all of us. 
The only way for us to know that we are truly loved is not by looking inward, but by looking upward and hearing the voice of God. You are my beloved. The only way for us to truly embrace and present our worth in the world is not through selfies, but through being salty. As beloved and redeemed of God, we are to be salty, not salty. And that's the third movement in the way of disciples. So we are on the third part of the worship series or sermon series the way of disciples. The first one we did two weeks ago uh, was on um, the heart of disciples, just to follow Jesus, that is to follow Jesus as disciples of Jesus Christ. And then second, last Sunday we spoke about uh, uh, practice, a standard of practice of disciples. The ones who are called to be disciples uh, to do what God requires of us. And then today we're talking about the lifestyle of disciple. Be salty, not salty. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if you lose that saltiness, you will be useless and worthless. Some of us have lost that saltiness by becoming salty. If it's all about you, your pretty image, your personal design, your self-worth, it's all about your own money, your own interest, opinion, ambition, ego, pride, your security, your safety, it's all about your health and, and your own life. If it's all about you, then you have lost that sense of saltiness and you have turned into salty. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. David. Let's bring out the other part of the popcorn this morning. <laughs> you, 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 you will taste different. So what does a salt do? Hurry up, David. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's bring some to a choir first because they feel kind of left out at first round, right? Because they were the last one to be served. So let's serve choir right away. Okay. So, what does salt do? So, I'm going to uh, uh, just briefly uh, touch on uh, the role of salt, and we all know what they are salt uh, seasoning, right? Uh, it's one thing, uh, and I'll be speaking about them much more uh, a bit later. Uh, it, salt uh, does uh, freshness, like bring preservative, right? How is it tasty? It's much better, isn't it? It's seasoning mixed like. So uh, in the uh, Old and New Testament, there are quite a bit of uh, passages on uh, referring to salt. Uh, salt was considered the sacred mineral in the Old Testament and it was used in uh, religious rituals as well and also in the culture is uh, eating salt was a sign of friendship. Eating salt was a sign of friendship. And one another part of salt, the uh, role of salt was disinfectant. It's like it's when there is an infection and you uh, put some salt. So it has a healing uh, role uh, as well. So in other words, metaphorically, when we use, uh, when, when, when we are salt, when you, you be a salt in, in the world, in, in, the, in the earth, it means that we are to go out there to, uh, to heal and reconcile and the broken uh, relationships and all that as well. Okay? Uh, some other culture, uh, salt has a different uh, role, like superstitious uh, role, because salt uh, I, I don't know in the other culture, but I think I, I've seen some Korean culture there. They spread salt when there were like a, a visitors or some strangers come that you really do not like these people. You just spread uh, the salt on the ground. It's kind of disinfect, something like that. And, and also uh, salt, uh, use the salt to teach uh, kids some lessons like shaming. Like, you know, when kids were like four or five years old, sometimes they pee on their bed, right? Some of you did that while you were four or five, right? So, I did. So, 
So in Korea, in a village, what they do is your, your parents actually send you out, if you pee on the bed, send you out and uh, just uh, uh, give you a bowl uh, and to uh, you go to neighbors and uh, get the salt, right? Uh, so the whole lesson is that, you know, shaming you so that you don't do repeat the peeing in the bed. So you go out there and then you, uh, people, neighbors would know right away. Uh, and so they would give you salt, but at the same time, uh, they bring a little bit of stick and try to hit you at the back. So, so, that's, a, so that's a Korean culture. So you don't need to remember that. <laughs> So it had uh, different uh, functions and different culture, but I, what I want to talk about salt today is about seasoning uh, role. Uh, it brings out the natural flavor of the food, enhances the taste of the food, and that you have maybe uh, noticed right away, right? Uh, the saltiness and just brings out. So how do you bring out the flavor of the main ingredient? See, there's a trick to bring out the flavor of the food. You just shake a little, right? You don't dump it. You just shake a little. So in the morning of Lunar New Year this year, Sue cooked rice duck soup. Uh, so that's why we, so it's a rice duck. It's a duck is like a wonton, but it's a thick noodle. It's a really a thick uh, rice noodle we cook uh, for early uh, Lunar New Year morning. To uh, symbolize that we have one year uh, older, right? so we, we eat that uh, lunar New Year. So she cooked this rice duck soup uh, uh, in this year. Uh, it's a tradition in Korean culture. So as all of you know, that she is my wife is a good cook. I know because I married her for thirty five years. Right? So I know that. Anyway, she is a good cook. So I got really excited and anticipating that delicious duck soup. And then I heard, oh no, <laughs> when she was cooking, or something like that. She said, what do I do? So what happened was the lid of the salt bottle, while she was shaking, just fell off while she was shaking, into the pot. And then, the, I guess a bunch of salt just drenched the whole, you know, one area of the soup. In other words, she uh, just drenched the soup with salt. So I said, don't just stand there, do something. <laughs> so, she just, she just scooped that area of soup where the salt drenched the most and gave me the soup to taste. <laughs> so I was going to say no, but, you know, I, like a good husband, I tasted it. Not too bad in the first scoop, but on the second scoop, I bit into a crumb of salt and soup tastes like hot seawater. You know? Not good. So we were about to throw it out, but I said, it's okay, let's not waste it. So I managed to eat it all and later drank a lot of water. <laughs> How do you bring out the flavor of the food? You just shake a little. Right? Not dump a whole bowl full of salt into the food. You shake a little and then you disappear. Right? Shake a little and bring out the natural flavor, and then salt disappears into the flavor. As a salt, we are called to enhance the lives of people in the world. We are called to bring out the flavor, to bring out the best of everything, the best of people's potential, the best of what can be possible, what has been hibernated. We are called to shake our saltness a little and to bring out the best flavor of this world to bring about the best possible flavor of our community. And then we disappear. Then we disappear. We shouldn't taste salt in the food. We should taste the flavor of the food, not the salt. Salt should just disappear into the food, but the flavor of the food comes out. That's what we are called to be, to be salt people. I think last year or something like I, I said something similar to like we are more like a saltiness is more like a manure that we are more like a manure. Remember that folks? No, you don't remember yeah. that? <laughs> Do I have to repeat it? <laughs> are we are like a manure when manure is together, you know, stinky, right? 
need to spread out, spread it out and disappear into the earth and nurture the earth, right? Like salt, we have to go a shake a little and then we disappear. As the salt disappears, a new taste emerges. As we sacrifice, a new life emerges in place of old. He just said, you are the light of the world. How do we fulfill the role of the shining light of the world to appeal and attract to the wider world? By being salty. Our appeal in the world, how people recognize us and how we can shine and appeal to the world as a light source is through our saltiness. We are called to be the light of the world, which means we are to have a wide appeal to the world not necessarily popular appeal, but wide and broad appeal. Jesus had a wide and broad appeal. Jesus was not popular in the sense of American Idol popular, but appealed to a wider spectrum of the people, especially appealing to those who were at the edge of society. The forgotten, the marginalized, the prostitutes, the homeless, the widows, the children, the average and ordinary folk of the world, the ones who had little power and wealth. He shined to the people on the peripheral. He got down to his hands and knees. He got his hands and feet dirty and messy. He got his heart and his life affected by the woundedness and messiness of this world. He disappeared into the world, into the messiness of this world, and became the light of this world. The only way we are to have the wide appeal that Jesus had is to follow Jesus into the world, not separating ourselves from the world, but engaging ourselves into the thick of the world, getting our hands and feet dirty, letting the messiness of this world messing up our lives, the brokenness and our, of our fellow brothers and sisters, the breaking our hearts, the dirtiness and violence of this world, to stir in us the courage to lay ourselves down, to die for the world. And that's how we shine. That's how we become the light of this world. And when that happens, the world will know us by our name, Christians, the disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you are the light and the salt of this world. Selfie is all about preserving and enhancing its own image. Salty is all about preserving and enhancing the flavor of this world. Selfie remains in its own world, while being salty, the salty dies into the world. But death leads to resurrection. What we die to and what we sacrifice to will lead to a new life in man. As the salt disappears into the world, the light shines. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. As followers of Jesus Christ, we are to be salty, not salty. It's the lifestyle of disciples of Jesus Christ, and it's the third movement in the way of disciples.